So like I said, tonight I'm going to go through the problem, the solution, how it works, what our strategy is, and how you can get involved. So what is the problem? Well, I'm not going to spend too much time because as a member of this club, I know everyone here kind of has a good idea as to what, what's going on in Washington, D.C. and the problems that we're dealing with. But one of the biggest problems is the, the debt and spending crisis. And what I want to highlight here is it does not matter who is in charge. The debt and spending increases. As you can see here, national debt, who is spending, starts out in 1970. And then our debt just continues to skyrocket. And you, you can see, regardless of administration, it just continues to go up. So it doesn't matter who's in power, Republicans or Democrats, spending debt just continues to climb. And it, this, this slide alone, to me, is, is reason enough for us to need to do something. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out is um, where, where it's spending, where our money is going. Most of it, 62% is mandatory spending. That's on Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid except that those funds are actually going broke. Medicare is going to be depleted by 2026, which is only seven years from now. And Social Security is supposed to be gone by 2034, which is 15 years from now. Another problem that we're faced with with the federal government is regulations without end. And it's not our lawmakers, our legislators, our congressmen, our senators that we're sending there to make these decisions that are making the actual regulations and laws. They've almost outsourced their Article I powers under the Constitution and have given it to the regulatory state, the bureaucracy. So you've got the debt and spending out of control, you've got the bureaucracy that's out of control, and the federal judiciary, which you don't have any say over either as a voter that's out of control and just continuing to do as they will. Furthermore, you have politicians that just won't leave. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi has been in Congress for 31 years, Senator McConnell for 34 years, Senator Schumer 33 years, Senator Grassley 39 years. Every single one of them has been in Congress longer than I've been alive. Over the years since the very first Congress, you can see the terms have continued to go up for members of the Senate and members of the House. Again, what is their incentive to do what we want, what we the people want? So what can we do? How do we solve this problem? Well, we believe the, the, the solution lies in Article 5 of the Constitution. So what is Article 5? Article 5 of the Constitution is the section of the Constitution that talks about amending the Constitution, what the process is. Now, I went to Montclair State University. I graduated with a history degree. I, to me, all I knew was the way that the Constitution was amended, right? You get two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate. They propose a, uh, an amendment. It goes to the states. Three-fourths of the states ratify it. There's another way to amend the Constitution that goes beyond Congress, goes around them. Article 5 states, the Congress, whenever two-thirds of both houses shall deem it necessary, shall propose amendments to this Constitution, or on the application of the legislatures of two-thirds of the several states, shall call a convention for proposing amendments, which, in either case, shall be valid to all intents and purposes as part of this Constitution, when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states, or by conventions in three-fourths thereof, as the one or the other mode of ratification may be proposed by the Congress. So what does that mean? So that means that there's a second method to amending the Constitution. When two-thirds of the states call for a convention, all of the states gather, they talk about it, they decide on you know, what amendments they could propose to the Constitution, it then gets sent, out of, once it comes out of the uh, convention, uh, it's then sent to the states, the states then vote upon it. Three-fourths of the states can ratify an amendment to the Constitution. Congress has no role in this secondary method. So our plan is to, with Convention of States is to use Article 5 for exactly the purpose 
that the founders intended. Call for a convention, propose amendments to the Constitution that will rein in our out of control federal government. So how does it work? I kind of just discussed it. The people will start this process. They ask their state legislators to support the Convention of States um, application. Then the state will vote upon it, the state legislators. It goes to the House, to the Senate. In our case in New Jersey, we have the Assembly in the Senate. It passes through there. And again, once two thirds of the states or 34 states call for a convention, the convention happens. 34 states call for an, uh, uh, a convention. And it's also important to note that the resolution has to be uniform. So what they're calling the convention for has to be the same in all states. Once the convention is called, amendments are discussed by the delegates at the, at the convention. It just takes a simple majority for the amendment to come out. And then it goes back to the states where 38 states or three fourths of the states would ratify it and it would become a part of the Constitution. So what our resolution particularly calls for is we want to amend the Constitution, but focusing on three specific subject areas. They are to impose fiscal restraints on the federal government, limit the size and scope of the federal government, and limit the terms of office for its officials and for members of Congress. And that also includes uh, judges, Supreme Court judges and federal judges. And it's also important to remember that what we're doing, we're doing this all as grassroots movement. So, you know, it's all about we the people rising up, teaming together, get, developing relationships with those other volunteers in your district. So how can you get involved? If you think that I've done a great job of selling this and you want to get more involved, what can you do? The very first thing that you can do is sign the petition. We have some petitions here tonight that you can sign. Basically what it is, is you're signing your name, you're saying you support Convention of States, and a letter is generated and sent to your legislators to let them know that you believe in this and you want an Article 5 convention to happen. You want New Jersey to call for, to call for that convention. Beyond that, there's more that you can do. You can get involved. This is what we really need in New Jersey. We need people to step up and develop relationships with other volunteers, educate more people, get them more involved, more engaged. I've been with Convention of States since 2014. It's been five years. The progress that we have made over those five years and, and the changes that have come have just been incredible. It's been really exciting. And there's really no better time to get more involved than, than now. And we're really starting to gain momentum in New Jersey. Like I had mentioned, our, our legislators here in District 40 just came involved. But a total of, I think, five legislators have endorsed Convention of States since the start of the year. You could also uh, donate to Convention of States if you're interested. Um, uh, contrary to what some people might think, we're not funded by the Koch brothers. We're not funded by George Soros, okay? We're, 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 our donations for our organization come from our grassroots support. I think the average donation is actually less than $100, so it's just a lot of different donors that are coming on board and de dedicating some money to uh, our organization. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, I tried to get through this as quickly as possible to give you guys an opportunity to ask any questions, but I really appreciate you giving me some time uh, to talk about this important issue. Thank you.